So in the continuing effort to measure AC line current, we're going to switch to the ADE7913. This little guy can do quite a little bit. It's built to do, I think, what we're looking for. Uh, it has isolation and everything else. Take a quick look at it. The 7913 has some nice features to it. First off, it provides complete galvanic isolation. They're right through here, the middle of the chip. Power comes in, DC power comes in, and the microcontroller connects out on this side via standard SPI protocol. You do need to attach a, a uh, crystal to it, and that's about it. Then, through the galvanic layer, it provides power to the ADCs. And on this side, it also includes a voltage reference and that seems to be pretty stable, and a temperature sensor for compensating for environmental conditions, and then uh, three ADCs, I believe these are 24-bit, designed for measuring uh, w one current and two voltage, or you should be, I believe I can pull this off as uh, two current and two voltage without any real problem, and so that should measure my two loads and my line voltage. All I have to do is hook it up right here, and then read the data. Let's see how that goes. So here's the test setup for today. Initially, we're going to start with a DC load to our level shifter, to the microcontroller, and out to the PC. Let's see how it works. For the initial test setup, we're going to use a high current DC power supply, down to a DC load, down to the uh, meter to monitor the current more accurately. Then down here to the ADE7913, and in this case, we're going to connect that load a power to the load through a 5 milliohm, that's 0 0.005 ohm shunt resistor. This is a Kelvin type, so we have the current that we're measuring passing through one side of the resistor's connections, and a separate pair of connections will allow the ADC to read the voltage differential. This small voltage connection goes into the ADCs on the 7913 which passes out to a level shifter and up to the microcontroller. Uh, the reason for a level shifter is that the ADC, ADE7913 only runs at 3.3 volts and this microcontroller, the Arduino Leonardo, is running at 5 volts. So I need to translate that just to be safe. So let's give it a run. So the quiescent output reading of the ADC is about 1240, plus or minus a bit. A fair bit of flutter fluctuation in that number though. At one amp, we're getting 4608, 4609, 4618. Again, still quite a bit of noise. Let's try two amps. At two amps, we're getting 7980, 7988, 7970. Let's move up to about four amps and see what we get. 17, what, sorry, 147.10 up to 147.20. Let's see how linear that is. So let's run the numbers on the DC test. On the 7913, we had a null output that's at zero amps of 1240. That was our count. And with an input of just one amp, we had 4608. That was the count, minus 1240 gave us a reading of 3368 steps per amp. At 2 amps we had a reading of 7978 giving us 3369 steps per amp, very close. And 4 amps we had a reading of 14710 giving us an output of 3367.5 steps per amp. That's great because it gives us an average of 3368.2 and a standard deviation of less than 1, which is very good. So this is very linear on DC readings. Now it's time to try it out with AC because that's what we're really going to be using in the end. But since I'm running it on a breadboard, I'm not going to fire it up with line voltages just yet. So right now we'll start with a 12 volt AC input. That will pass through the shunt through our load, which in this case is just a couple of uh, small low voltage light bulbs, and then pass back through our DMM to give us a nice steady RMS current reading. 
That shunt is then fed into the ADC across the galvanic isolation barrier here and out through the level shifter to the microcontroller our Arduino in this case and then off to the PC. Noting that the microcontroller and level shifter use 5 volts and then the other side of the level shifter and the AD7913 converter device uh, the ADC there runs at 3.3. .3. Alright let's try it out now with a small AC load and see what we get. Well at 350 milliamp RMS we're getting values all over the place and once again that's going to be due to the AC coming through the line instead of DC and we're sampling all over the wave AC waveform so sometimes we're getting positive and sometimes we're getting negative so let's uh, see if we can improve that so we've made a change to the Arduino programming we are now oversampling it and we'll take the maximum value and then dis of a set of samples and then display that let's see if that works a little bit better as you can see on the screen, the microcontroller is outputting much more stable voltages, 1258 to 1270 we'll call it. That's with no current passing through. Let's try it at maybe half an amp or so, or 0.35 amps. So with a small light bulb connected up, we're getting uh, 0.358 we'll call it amps and a nice reading of 2903. Now we'll try it with a heavier load at 0.4 amps, 0.43 amps we're getting 323, 325, 3, 3, not bad. At 2.2 .2 amps we're getting 11, 11,355 to 11,320 something. We'll run those numbers and that's at 2.2 amps roughly. So at about 4 amps reading, we're getting 19,640, 19,620 something. Alright, let's run the numbers and see how linear that is. So the 7913 had a null output at 0 amps of 1265. With an input of 0.36 amps, we had a reading of 2903 minus our 1265 offset. Gave us 1638 divided by our 0 0.36 amps is 4550 amps sorry, 40 reading of 4550 counts per amp. At 0.43 amps, our reading worked out to 4581 counts per amp. 2.2 amps, our reading was 4581. Uh, I'm not sure what I did there. I had to divide by something error. And at 4 amps, we had a reading of 4588 per amp. So again, very linear. Our average came out to 4575. That was a standard deviation of only 17, which is very low. All readings fall well within two standard deviations. The furthest one out was about one and a half sta standard deviations. So again, still very linear, very accurate. I really like that. So what do we think about the ADE7913? Well, I like this little chip. It's uh, got everything I need. Three channels of ADC. Galvanic isolation provides its own power from the communication side. SPI bus. The only problem that I've got left is that uh, I'll have to do lots of sampling in order to catch uh, voltage spike, current spikes, voltage spikes, brownouts, things like that. But I'll be keeping this one in the running for at least a little longer.